Hi guys, it's Monday and we're doing art class. If you're joining us for replay, thank you so much for tuning in and be kind enough to share the love. And um, I'm just waiting, hanging on in for uh, a few of you to join us. But while we're waiting, as you can see, I have already prepared. Hi Jeanette, and I know some of my other guys have prepared, prepared too. So, you're all coming on. Hi Mickey. Hi Amanda. Just adding your love. Excited. I'm excited about this one. It's been fun preparing. you go half a screen you can't see it so just give me a sec talk amongst yourselves and i just make adjust this a little bit hello everybody hope you're having a good day man we've we've prepped already Ooh. um i've even gone in and started putting facial features on because i wasn't sure how far paula was going with hers so you've ruined it because i'm going to spend most of today helping people get to that stage that's absolutely fine Mine is huge, <laughs> absolutely huge. So, you know, I'm going to be playing catch up probably most of the time. It is huge. I'm loving the colours choice. I went full on pop art. Yay! Um, yay! To the, to the extent that I was using masking tape, um, yeah. and there's all sorts on there. There's, there's chalk paint, there's acrylic paint, there's... Um, uh, street art, spray paint. <laughs> She's gone for it. <laughs> oh, Paula, I am. Um, I'm kind of. What can I say? Um, I've been taken over. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> now it has to be said, guys, that this idea, this this thing is. I can't take credit for this idea. We've been searching and looking on Google and YouTube for ideas and we, I found this fantastic video um, by a guy called John Beckley. By all means look him up on YouTube, you'll see him doing a similar version of this. It's fantastic, amazing artist. And we just yes. both said, oh, I want to have a go at that. Wow. <laughs> so, we both are like, oh my God. Yeah, so we have a different face, but the background, the scenario that I gave you in the first place is all, is all him. So I can't take credit for that. Hi, Georgia. No, I'm behind the scenes. I've had little photographs sent to me of various people's um, preps that are looking very good and similar to mine. Even Malia has done one. Woo -woo. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't seen any. Yeah. So, guys, have you got your picture printed off? Yes. Yes, ma'am, I have. As you can see, my printer is in dire straits. George, I cleaned it. I even cleaned the head. It worked first time. Next time looks like this. Terrible. So yours is much better. So Ma let me have a look at what you've done, man. I, I went to the printer. Right. So Manda's already messed this up by not following the plan. Because the plan is to fold your picture. Because <laughs> we're only having one eye in it. Well, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having that You're in having it. You're having two. It's fine. <laughs> but literally her facial features not you know yeah, it doesn't matter i'm gonna talk everyone through hi Malia. yay i'm gonna talk you through so if you've got a piece of paper printed off i want you to fold it so you can just see the corner of her right eye fold it in oh. half so you've got a line so how many people are watching paula yay. i'm watching i'm seeing them all pop up Pa-ching, pa-ching, pa-ching. Fantastic. So that's what I need you to start with. I then want to talk to you a little bit, just for five seconds, about pencils. I might be talking, teaching you to suck eggs, but we talk about pencils being, well, the, the most average pencil we use at HB. I've no idea what the B stands for, but it means soft. The H means hard. Um, 
the H range you don't want at all unless you're an architect doing architectural straight line drawings. It's the bee collection that you want. And if you could go, most shops will sell you the range of bees, which will range from HB to 5B. And the stronger the bee, the stronger the number, the higher the number, the softer the pencil is. So that's how you do your shading and your drawing. But also they are much easier to rub out than, hey, Georgia. than the H ones. Hiya. Oh, Georgia from Texas as well. Blimey. <laughs> so. You carry on, love. I'm just watching people yeah, pop up. Yeah, you do that. So what I did when I first started drawing this out, because it's actually really difficult for me. Hi, Barbara. For me to show you, I don't know if you can see my lines. Amanda show much clearer because she's on a lighter background to start with. So I'm just going to talk you through, really, as I said I would, where I would start drawing on this picture. Because I was looking at it thinking, God, where do I start? Do I start at the eye? Do I start? Anyway, so what I decided was that the, um, the middle of the mouth here, top of the mouth, is about a third of the way across the page. So I divided my sheet into a third. Hi Diane, hi Michelle. Can you see that? And then what I did was used my pencil to measure the width of the mouth with my thumb notching it and then the top of the mouth to the bottom of the chin. So then I knew where my chin was is now, because mine's enlarged too like Manda is, so my chin to there is a whole pencil, but a whole pencil is also the width of the mouth. So I'm all the way through using my pencil to measure what's the same as. So that the same of the mouth is three quarters of the depth, uh, up and down of the mouth. So that's how you get your proportions right. So I'm, I'm hoping that while I'm talking, some of you are having a go at actually translating what I'm saying. So I started with my, the base of my... Not all of them, Paula. Some of them are wondering about my glasses. Uh, so tell them to just, you know, get on spec and, yeah, and get stop my glasses. getting on with it. This is important stuff, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so is, did you use this method when you were doing it? No, of course not. But I'll talk you through what I did. <laughs> I did a bit, a bit more of a uh, painting with Nancy. <laughs> and how does that go? Do you want me to explain? Yeah, go. Just very, 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 very quickly? Yeah. Yeah? Right. Okay. So what I did was um, I looked at my picture um, and I divided it up into four. Okay. Um, sometimes I would divide it much more, but I've just made four sections and I sectioned out my canvas with masking tape. Um, and then I drew in where the, where the sections would be on there. Excellent. And when it came to the bottom, I sort of made a bit of a pig's ear of it, which is why I've got lots of uh, sort of, you know, skin color covering up the black lines that I'd made a mush of. I did it all kind of two up, it needed to be down a bit more. So, you know, but you know, no, I, I looked at it, it, assessed it and corrected it. So I'm going to take the masking tape off now, now that I've explained that. Great. It's flipped. But, uh... Carry on, Paula. Right, someone was asking if my screen is flipped, but I have flipped it now. So this is my, hi Terry. Yeah, so this is my image exactly as I have it here. So I like I like what you've done, Amanda. That's a really logical way of doing it too. Yeah, it was kind of how I was taught. I laugh about paint along with Nancy, but it was kind of how I was taught. We were also taught, you know, using using the pencil. I I couldn't get to grips with it. I couldn't sort of judge. Um, so I went back to the method I first learned. Because of course, for me, using the pencil. It's not only about, it's obviously, for me, it's easy with the face in front of me, but if I'm doing something in the background, in the distance, by measuring the width of a building, I use my thumb 
to get the right width. And then I can translate it to the paper and use my thumb. That was always what we were taught to do. We also Yeah, I, I, I found that tricky. I mean, that's, that's just me. I think I just didn't quite, you know, get it <laughs> somehow. <laughs> I'm, I'm no, I, you know me, Paula. I'm no artist. I've just splat paper. I don't know. Everywhere. That looks great. Um, well, you know, I'm not dissing it. <laughs> so, you guys have to sort of spend some time using the technique that I'm showing you to get your drawing on and get your drawing good. I mean, obviously, man does take some time to play on the shapes. I have to. You can't see it as clearly as you can on Mandas, but, but they are there. But I, I did do mine in pencil. I went up first. I of went all, up to a darker but... pencil. Have you done it in black now? Yeah, I've I've gone over in, in black acrylic paint. Okay, so I haven't done just, that. Just so that I could see yeah. it on top of all this, you know, colour. I understand. That's a good idea. So you can carry along if you're working alongside, starting to draw that out. And do it carefully, take some time over it, don't rush it, because it's the drawing in it that is going to give you the quality that you want at the end. And I imagine Manda will tell you the same as me, she took some time over producing that. I, I did, I, I, I did, I must admit, I, I rushed the, the bottom piece. Um, and I wish I hadn't, because I then had to go back in and correct it later, yeah. the proportion yeah. was wrong. It's definitely worth doing it right, getting the drawing of the eye. I've got a tiny, most of that is sort of going to be black shadow. There's a nose here and then a bit of a hair coming down here. So I'm going to go in with some white, but I'm going to water it down so it's quite washy at the moment, just so that hopefully you will start seeing some of the features appear as I go around them. I'm not going to worry about painting in the features at the moment. I'm just trying to sort of tone down the face because it's quite hard to distinguish between the pattern that is a bit bonkers madness. Yeah, that's 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 what I found really yeah. tricky and that's why I wanted to make it sort of really stand out. If, you, if you're um, and you haven't done the background, just go straight for the face. If any of you um, are watching replay later or um, haven't got the face for hand, it's in the paint forum, my paint forum files section. You can pull it up. This is a picture of Kate Moss. But I thought it following on from last week uh, where we talked about face on portraits and circles, Kate Moss has still very much got circles for her eyes, a circle around her nose, circle on her chin. They were still present and relevant. She's got such a symmetrical face, hasn't she? she it's has. glorious. She's got a lovely face and it's done in really nice lighting. So I thought it was just perfect from following on what we already know. I haven't drawn the circles here, but I'm aware that they're, they're here. Look, I can just sort of paint in her chin a bit there, which is the circle. Which will make it easier once we start the shading, but... I really am just using watered down white chalk paint at the moment. If you've got acrylic, use acrylic, but you'll start seeing the face, hopefully, <laughs> come to life. Are you doing the same, Amanda? Yeah, I'm, I've, now that I've taken my masking tape off, I'm just going over the bits that would have been um, on the masking tape. Okay. So just filling in those features. And you're right, I mean, you know, when you go back to these circles, um, although I haven't put them in for the eyes, I've sort of followed on the picture, I've had to come in and do them on the chin and on the nose. Noses I find really tricky still. So giving that circular movement yeah, will really help me. Oh, and I've actually really caught, I've never seen your Nancy What's It way either, so people might find that easier too. We used to divide up, I guess not fold the paper, but we used to like just grid it, grid it up with lines. Yeah, and yeah, then, same, same principle. And then grid up, um, 
a bigger slot to enlarge or to shrink it. That's how we would do it. We'd grid it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I do find that easier for me, you know. And everyone finds their own techniques. And you can pinch and and you know pinch from different techniques and find out what works for you. Yeah, and use both because mine will work when you're actually doing someone's portrait because you haven't got a picture to fold up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I never intend to do that. <laughs> if I'm doing a portrait, then I'm going to take photos and I'm gonna I'm gonna grid it. Um, if you decide you like landscapes more or you want to do a quick sketch and just go and sit out somewhere on a nice sunny day, you can use your pencil to get things in proportion. That's always a good Well, that's the thing. And I've, I've seen art classes and they're, and, they're, and they're there and they're sort of, you know, they're like, they're like this. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what? How, how? It doesn't make... I think it's spatial awareness with me. It's like, um, it's like driving. I'm great at driving. But if I need to go from, let's say, uh, A to Z, I need to think, oh, how do I go from A to B, then B to C, <laughs> then C to D, then D, <laughs> and so on. <laughs> I can't see the bigger picture. And I think it's, it's like that with the whole, yeah, it's spatial awareness with me. Well, the other trick that, that they used to give us while doing that while we were out, because it um, was to to bring up a fake frame. So if you just cut out of a bit of cardboard out of a brown box thick sort of frame, it gives you the edges of, so that if you're holding it out in front of you, it gives you the picture that you're drawing as oh, a that, fake frame. If somebody had told me that, that would make a lot more yeah, sense. Yeah, well that does really help because then it just focuses on exactly what you're looking at and then you use your pencil to measure things, to put things in. Yeah, I'm with you. But I'm hoping you guys can see a little bit more of what I, my face now, just by putting in a bit of washy white. I've got a few drips going on as well, but that's all kind of part of this style. And while I'm... So you're, you're using chalks, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. So mine are quite washy. I'm, I'm using acrylics, which obviously are a bit um, thicker. So some of them are more... It depends on the, um, on the quality of the acrylics. I've noticed that. You know, we went shopping. We had a girly shopping trip, didn't we, Paula? We did. And we, we did a little bit of shopping. And we talked makeup. On... <laughs> right. We talked makeup, yeah. Because <laughs> I know nothing. Well, Paula's got this lovely daughter, Georgia, who's, who's 12. So she's kind of of that age where she's, you know, it's, it's a kind of nice mummy daughter time. Um, and you would think, you know, she's got a birthday and there's Christmas and all sorts coming up, isn't there? So um, it would be nice for you to have that girly mummy time. And she knows nothing about makeup. No, you're wrong. She said to... I know nothing about makeup. Georgia knows everything. I got home, she knew it all. But you, that, no, that's what it means. You know nothing about makeup. <laughs> um, anyway, we popped into this art shop and um, it was a bit of a discount shop and it's great, absolutely great for, for your basics. And I picked up this ac acrylic pack. Oh, that's a bargain. It is a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, not quite the bargain I thought. They're very watery. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, you sort of get what you pay for. But it does, you know, it's like swings and roundabouts. Sometimes I like um, more gloopy chalk paints and sometimes I like thinner chalk paints. And So it's okay. I'm not moaning. <laughs> Much. Much. <laughs> You were so funny though on Friday. Yeah. I have to, I've, I've really, I've really seen, really seen the true you. <laughs> I texted her before the live on Saturday. You don't know this, Malia, but you might have remembered if you were watching really closely that right at the beginning of the live, I was like, look naked, and that was because immediately previously I bought quite a bright, strong lipstick, and I put it on, looked terrible. And it smudged everywhere. It was sort of bleeding down my mouth. And I and I just <laughs> texted her and said, Oh, the public doesn't need me tonight.
night. I look like a lush. And uh, <laughs> I said, but my eyebrows look quite good, but they're hidden under the fringe. They're not very good, is it? So, She's an artist. And I said to her, look, the secret is you put foundation over your lips and you use a brush to apply a strong colour lipstick. Well, any lipstick, really, in theory, but particularly a strong coloured lipstick. And she's got, like, you know, thousands of brushes, very appropriate. She could use those as an artist. And I said, fuck that, I'm going naked. <laughs> <laughs> Hence my comment, look, like, naked, Amanda. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm saying I'm gonna glam you up. Look at me. What? This is hardly glam. I'm hardly an advert for well, glam. Yeah. Well, you, you've turned up looking very nice at work. I, I do scrub up, I have to say. If, if I say so myself, I'm, I, when I've made an effort, I do scrub I up. I don't, I lush up. <laughs> you lush, yeah, yeah, yeah. You certainly did. Yeah. <laughs> and I love you for it. I love you for trying. Yeah. Perhaps I shall as a tomboy in my life. I don't know. But I'm going in with a bit of grey now if I can find some. A bit of grey. I'm finding it hard to see without my specs. Are you, are you still doing your features or are you actually colouring colouring in? Well, yeah, colouring in by numbers. I've just done the white. <laughs> sort of the, the, all of the highlighty areas I filled in with my washy white. Can you see that? Right. And now I'm going to go to the next level of grey areas because this picture is very helpfully in black and white. And we're going to stick to it, except for we're going to give her lips the lip job that I can't give myself. I'm going to use flesh tones. All right. But I'm going to do grey. With, with, with my dark, want, with my black and white. I want to keep it easy for people so that we've got a complete yeah. contrast with the colour underneath. We're now doing pop art grey and white. And the colours still look lovely, it sort of gives purpose to the colours that they're peeking through and the patterns that we've got underneath, I really like it. Well, I'm gonna get on and start painting. Well, you, you got, oh, all right, why bother? You'll have to check out the original um, video of this by, what did I say his name? John Beckley. If you go on YouTube, he's he does like a fast forward of it. Um, he's very talented. Um, the music. Did I just hear a cat? Yes. Can you hear it? <laughs> I heard a meow. Yeah, that's the giver cat. That, that, um, she's very vocal all the time. She brings us gifts all the time, but she doesn't understand. Oh, is that the one? Yeah, she doesn't understand. She, can't. she brings you pegs and things from people's gardens. Yes. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Plays pegs, garden, gloves. Neighbours must love yeah, you. You have to go around periodically, give it all back. And apologise. Yeah, she bought me a parcel <laughs> once with, with that proper post. <laughs> and when we went, took it back to the owners, it was miles, like about five roads away. And she trooped. Oh, of course, it would have the address on it, yeah. wouldn't it? She yeah. trooped over all of the garden, up high, bringing it, bringing me her keep. Well, that you know, that was very kind yeah, of that's her. Yeah, She's pay, paying her way. She doesn't bring me nice, so that's all good. Well, I'm glad about yeah. that. The others bring me nice, but she doesn't. I, I don't let her in here in the dining room, so she, she doesn't understand. Well. Right, how are we doing, guys? <laughs> I don't know, you look good, Malia. This is what started all this. I've got to sort it out, get some A game going. Do you always look glamorous in your bed, lipstick? <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not my colour. How many of you are actually having a go at this? How many of you prepared the background? And how many of you didn't? Oh, I'm going to have a go later. Let me know what you think. 
We're not, we're not judging you whether you did no, or you didn't. No, not at all. You don't have to show me at all if you don't want to. I just want to know, really, for myself, if it's worth the effort of me sort of preparing and going through this, if, if you guys are enjoying it, if it's interesting, you're learning. Most of the feedback I've had, no, all of the feedback I've had behind the scenes has been really positive. Um, and we've upped our game again this week with all this preparation stuff going on behind, which we won't necessarily do every week. We might just start a new picture and I, I will upload a picture, a portrait to follow. I thought would be just the easiest way, different portraits. Yeah, something to work on each week I think would be a great idea. But sometimes these pictures might take more than one week and I'd rather do it right. And for us to have time, for you to go away and practice a little bit, and then you can either privately message me or group paint for me if you're having problems, so that I can sort of troubleshoot and give you some tips on perhaps what to do next, and then we'll come and we gather next week to uh, we can straighten it out, but. I'm still very much, as I hope you're gathering here, going for the kind of free-spirited brushes. I've got quite a big brush going on here, and I'm just doing a lot of, I'm going to bring it up a bit closer, a lot of sweeping chips at the moment. It looks much better in full size here than it does on screen, to be honest, because that's the problem. I've got a new lens coming, Amanda. It's exciting. A new walk a coming. Lens that you attach to the um, phone so that you'll get a much bigger view of what's happening here. Oh, I see. Which will be great for our techno stuff. It will be great for our paint the pints as well. So brilliant. It. Yeah, it's cool. I saw it online. But... Does that mean I need one as well? Um, you can do if you want, but initially we'll just use mine on paint and a pint, and then if you decide you want one at home, you can get one. Okie doke, I'll see how it goes. It wasn't very expensive, so. So I'm going in with my, um, blah, 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 my acrylics and I'm not making it full coverage. I want the colours to pop out underneath. So it's just to give like the appearance of skin tone. I'm going to push my camera a little bit further away, which might mean you'll lose the close-upness, but it might mean that you see the whole thing. Is that better? Is that, is my book clearer now? Uh, you need to swizz it a bit, swizz it a bit. Right. So you, can you get it so it's like, um, straight onto the picture? That's, be that's better. That's better. Yeah. Come in a bit towards you. Hello? That's about as good as I get. Much, be much better. Oh, yeah, now we can see it sort of straight on. Right. Do you know, I went to Hobbycraft again today. <laughs> Our new favourite place. <laughs> And, um, well, I'm so lucky that it's just down the road from me. That's dangerous. So lucky. That's dangerous. And, um, <laughs> weren't, weren't you in yesterday? <laughs> I said, yes, and the day before. <laughs> Love it. And I hated it the weekends because, um, obviously, you know, lovely parents take their lovely children. And um, it's very busy and the aisles are quite narrow. And I just want to go in and get what I need. I'm already forgetting what it's like to have young children and becoming that, you know. Get out the way! Uh, <laughs> who was that? Get out the way! Yes, yes, get out. Yes, that's exactly how I felt. I felt like some grumpy old bastard. <laughs> that hates kids and I don't I love children just not when I want to do my shopping in Hobbycraft no. 
Kids are often quite scary in the shop as well. Huh? Kids are often quite scary in the shop. They're quite scary in, in the my shop. shop. I think because I used to work in a school, I've always been quite quick to pick up on children that are misbehaving. And obviously, when you work in a school, that's absolutely fine and appropriate. But when you're out and about and it's somebody else's child, it's not really your place. Yes, when you're not responsible for them. No, but then when it's my shop, it becomes a bit of a grey area. So, yes, I um, I have had situations where children are cl literally climbing on furniture in my shop and the parents are doing nothing and then I hear myself going <laughs> what do you think you're doing <laughs> get off <laughs> yeah and then I look at the parents and I'm like oh I'm really sorry <laughs> it's the parents that sort of say oh look at Johnny he's so inquisitive he does like to explore yeah. <laughs> and I think well go and explore your own house darling not not in my shop yeah. But that said, we also have lots of absolutely adorable children that come in. And Noodle is very fond of children. And he's very good with the kids. He's very good with the little ones. He's always really gentle. But he can never eat more than one at a time, can he? <laughs> oh, my face is looking huge and... I hope you can start to see the features now, guys. It's all a bit scary. Can you see it? Screaming kids make me want to whack the parents. Mine did not do that. No, well, mine didn't do that either. You see, my, I, I have a real bugbear about children that run around in restaurants and pubs when you go out for a meal. It's a real bugbear. My children wouldn't have dreamt of getting down from the table and running around. And... You know, like even when they played up as, as young children, they all probably all of them had once to be told, carry on with that and you're going to sit in the car while we continue with our meal. And I had to implement it once each with them and they never did it again. And there's no need for it. And it just ruins everyone else's meal. When you're paying for a meal and you've got someone else's child charging around the restaurant, that's my rant over. <laughs> no, no, I totally agree with you. There's no need for it. It's about, you know, parenting. I mean, you know, Hannah, for example, has never done that kind of stuff. She makes noises. It's what she does. But, you know, she doesn't run riot. Nice. She knows that's wrong. I love that story that you said to me the other day that despite Hannah having a clear diagnosis of autism... That, that doesn't mean that she also hasn't got the ability to make choices within that and have behaviour within that. Absolutely. And that her, the, the teacher that she has at school, the carer that she has at school, is absolutely aware she is more than capable of saying goodbye. Yes. And yes. she doesn't want to say goodbye, but she's sitting in the car grumbling, but the carer won't leave it until she's acknowledged her and waved, and she does. Yeah. Exactly and that. her wave is just kind of... <laughs> as long as she's made that hand gesture <laughs> and made that acknowledgement, you know, then that's fine. Because otherwise, you have you have to sort of you have to ask yourself: is it is it a symptom? I.e., you know, Hannah has autism. Is it the autism, or is it the child? Is it the behaviour? You know, you can't put everything down to the autism. No. I mean, today, for example. She was just being a stroppy teenager. She's 18. She was being a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and all children are having tough times one way or another, hormones and all the rest of it, when they get to my, um, you know, mine aren't perfect at all. That doesn't mean they've got the free-for-all excuse to behave exactly as they want, whenever they want, and we can just write it off as hormones. No. No, exactly. And the world is a different place, you know, much different to when we grow up. Much. Mm. Huge. Um, but again, that's not an excuse. Well, we all not an we still manage hormones now, don't we, as adults? And yes. we're pregnant, but that doesn't give us the excuse to be rude. No. And I'm at the next hormonal stage. <laughs> <laughs> 
So does that give me the right to be a grumpy old, grumpy old lady? Wow. I think it does. <laughs> I think maybe it does. Um, right, I'm going to start going in with some shading. I'm using your lovely blue. Dima. Can't remember. Uh, white one. Dima. Yeah, I really like that blue. Just to give it some sort of feeling. What else have we got going on? Screen kids, do you still on the screen and kids over? Well, wow. I said to Amanda, when I worked in the school, I was that teacher person, TA, that the kids used to look at just before they were about to consider doing something naughty to see if I'd clock them or not. And I'd say, yeah, you know, I think we're going to move away. <laughs> <laughs> I was the other way, I was a complete pushover. Complete pushover. Yeah, but the kids would say to me, Mrs. Pennington, Mrs. So and so, or Mr. So and so said it was okay. And I'd say, Oh, all right then. <laughs> I'd go, mm, Give it to me in writing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's. Since the fostering, really, toughen me up. I, I remember very early on, a very kind, my, my very first foster child, who I loved to pieces, but he was a little devil child. Um, and when, Surely not. Yeah, he was. He, he'd admit it. He, he was 13 when he came to me. And um, the school had rang and said X, Y, and Z had happened at school. And he had his own version of events, which I like any decent parent would do, rang the school to defend his honour. And uh, she said to me, and I thought it was the kindest way of putting it ever, she said, I think he's being a bit slippery. <laughs> with the truth. Yes. <laughs> a bit slippery with the truth. And it a bit slippery, a bit loose with the truth. Yeah, it materialised over time that even when they had sort of actual camera footage of his behaviour, he was still swearing blind he wasn't there or, or on the premises yeah it wasn't me yeah <laughs> and i learned the hard way and i've regularly used the phrase slippery ever since stop being slippery good work and the other thing that that used to be used an awful lot with the children was because they used to say no you i didn't do it you can't prove i did it blah blah blah, blah. and i'd say it isn't a court of law in my house it isn't for me to prove you I only have to suspect it, and if I suspect it, that's good enough for me. And if you want to do any proving, well, that's up to you. God, you're a hard yeah. woman, Mrs. Rowles. <laughs> it's how I survived, 30 foster children. <laughs> <laughs> Rather you than me, Mrs. Yeah, well, you know, they're real great. I'm in touch with quite a few of them still. You know, it's not, I don't think being hard they, they respect you for being fair and being, once they realise... I think res absolutely respect goes a long yeah, way. Yeah, once they realise you're not know, a those, those children need a lot of respect, don't yeah. they? But, um, to give and receive. Yeah, as long as it's um, combined with praise when things go well. We used to make it a policy, and sometimes we'd say it with gritted teeth. Every night before they went to bed, to say one good thing about they, that they had achieved that day. So even if you know on some desperate days where it had been appalling all day, he'd say, "I really appreciate the fact that you walked up the stairs quietly tonight." <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate the smile that you finally forced to. <laughs> but it was by policy that I would find something positive before they went to bed so they didn't go on a bad night. Oh, I think that's lovely. <laughs> I don't know, can what? you see my picture now? Is it coming together from your distance? Oh my god, yes! <laughs> Have you seen mine? Oh yeah. See, my three shades has really made a massive difference, hasn't it? <laughs> I've, I've got a big canvas to cover. That's, that's, that's my explanation. Oh, bye, Georgia. Catch up later. Hi, Hazel. 
I hope you're seeing the chat. This is what we're working from, which is Kate Moss, in case anyone missed the beginning. And I've got a very stripy printer going on. I folded the picture so that I've only got one and a tad of an eye showing. Amanda's doing a little bit more than that. Um, you can get the picture in the paint forum if you want to have a go at it yourself. There is an initial video loaded onto YouTube now of how to do this background that I started at at the beginning of this session today. So you can, you can go on to that to catch up and then obviously watch through what we've been doing today. But I've literally put on three colours, white, grey and black in quite solid shades to be fair. Sort of, um, and I'm doing shapes, which is very, this is very pop arty in style and I'm not going to be doing all pop, I mean I'm sort of exploring abstract a lot at the moment um, which I'm really enjoying but there's a lot of things you can do within abstract so I've been playing behind the scenes I think I, should, I posted this, this has still got some more work to be done but um, this is my we all need someone to hold us tight and I've got a bit more work to do on that one but I quite enjoy just the freeness of it. And then I've got a... I love this in the rain. Have you seen this, Amanda? Hmm? Yes! I'm yeah, actually in the lovely. rain with my boots. I just really like the reflections. My customer said that I ought to call it reflections. And then this, this was the previous piece that we worked on. So we're doing all kinds of abstract, but mostly for me, it's going to be portrait stuff because that's mostly what I've been doing all my life really, which is, um, well you either love it or you hate it, <laughs> but it, it's always fascinating. I, I started one today. Yeah. Um, I'll show you in a minute. I shall reveal all. I'm just trying to get this shadow. Uh, I shall show you, it's behind this one. And it's not finished by any means, obviously. Oh, look at you. Another biggie. It is. <laughs> so, yeah, I've really, really been enjoying it. Just um, acrylic shades of browns and blacks. And did you have, really. did you have a picture to work by? Uh, yeah. I will. Where is it? I love it. It was around somewhere. Mm, I'll have to stick it up when I finish the picture. All right. But I've just been loving it. And I think I work better on a big canvas because I think I'm, you know, because I'm so messy and I'm not like, you know. It, when I do small pieces, I kind of want it to be so exact and so precise. Yeah. When I do bigger pieces... The detail doesn't matter well. It, it doesn't matter because when I stand back on it, it looks like I want it to look. Yeah. I understand. That makes I understand that. These pieces come together really quite quickly and it is really from spending the time with the... Um, drawing first so if any of you are sort of just watching really spend the time because now it is really easy to fill it in and of course the initial background if you watch the video was super easy to do um, and quite effective in its own right some people thought that was that was what we were going to be doing today in all which is what happened when Mandra and I watched the other video we were like wow Got to have a yeah, we just loved yeah. it. Just loved yeah. it. Um, and while I remember, last week we did a um, post your funkiest item on my page, and I got loads of amazing pictures. I love the way you guys are all joining in with, with what you want. And I looked today, and the winner who's going to feature on my page this week was a very clear. Um, Jane Gallivan Dandria from Jane Henner's Reloved Furniture, that's her business page, um, which I looked up today and gave it a like. I'm going to be putting a link to her page on my page. 
So pop on over and show her some love. Her piece was lovely. Um, and oh, I chose the funkiest um, title last week. So I think, Amanda, if you want to put you on the spot, but you've got a little while to think about it. What, what are we going to go for this week? Oh, my God. No pressure. No pressure. Okay, I'll get back to yeah. you. <laughs> See now, I've actually put the... Have you put the teeth in on yours? No, not yet. I haven't even touched the mouth yet. So I have put the teeth in mine, and teeth are always a bit of a wary for me, to be honest. They either look terrible or they look just like all teeth <laughs> i am dreading coming to do the teeth i have to say so i've kind of drawn them out and i shall probably be just um very lightly giving them the, the lightest white gray wash just to sort of take the brightness out of them but Oh. I'm just trying to solid solid up her mouth a bit. Which you guys have got a much better picture than me going. Mine is just full of lines from my uh, stupid printer. Susan says, wow, well, Amanda. Who does? Susan are, you, Susan, are you doing yours? I know you prepped, or are you going to do it afterwards? Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. I love the fact, even, that we've just interpreted it differently as well. You know, I don't think this, yes. this should be a sort of standard... No, exactly. You know, you, you ask two people to, to, to paint a piece of um, art with the same theme, they shouldn't come out exactly the same. I think that would be awful. Imagine what the, like, the, the artists that do sort of, um, you know, like proper, I don't know, Re Rembrandt copies, how hard that must be to do someone else's style. Yes, exactly. Because you can't put any of yourself no, into it. No, I, I don't know how they do it. But, but I do laugh when I see, um, you know, when you see pictures and it's like, oh, original art. And it is. But it's like one person doing the, the blue and then it's on, on the conveyor belt. The next person do it, putting the red on. And, you know, so, so it goes on. Well, it's original. <laughs> <laughs> I, quite, I just quite like my name for him. I shall have to give her a name. Should I have to give her? Do I have to call her Kate because it's Kate? No, you can call her anything. I'm going to call mine Louisa. Uh -huh. <laughs> and unless it turns out a complete monkey, and then I might call it Paula. <laughs> Are you going to get it finished today? Well, I don't know. I'm going to see what feedback I get, whether I carry on and finish it on my own. or Because whether... mine is going to take a long time, obviously. And mine probably isn't. Mine... No. Because you've chosen a complicated route. And I'm doing pop art which is shapes. What are you sanding off? I shall try for my own. It's lots of thought for me. Love it though. Good Susan, I want to see what you do with it. It does, 
Susan, just get the drawing right, okay? Spend the time on the drawing. When, when you go back, if you, I'm not sure if you were here at the beginning or not, but, if, but make sure you watch the beginning of this. And I talk about how to get the proportions right and how to get that, that going. Because that's, that's the most important bit. This bit really hasn't taken me very long at all. And it's just literally filling out shapes. But I actually love, because I've done all of the white in a very washed out white, um, which is really good. Now shows the colours from behind. Um, make sense of the background as well but i really like it I'm stronger white in now because originally the white was very washy on her face but she's obviously got highlights on her hair i think mine's going to take a lot of drying time as well but i might pop on and do a bit tomorrow um yeah, we could just have a catch up and see because I shall have some feedback by then as well, hopefully. So even if we have a shorter session tomorrow, see where people are at. <laughs> Wiping my palette on my trousers. <laughs> just for a change. That's the way I'm always so dirty. Yeah, I'll be lucky if I get half a face done tonight. Which is why I'm only doing half a face, Amanda. Well, yes, but I've got a bloody big canvas to cover. <laughs> and I want to build it in layers. It's all about the layers for me. Oh, it's got very quiet. It has, concentrating. <laughs> you get lost. So am I. Not like me. You get lost in this stuff. You can lose hours painting. Hubby's been quite pleased with the arrangement now I've got the dining room because I just go, oh, I can't, I just can't watch the racing anymore. And then I just say, oh, go on, you watch the racing and I'll go and paint. <laughs> Sounds like a damn fine arrangement. Yeah. What is it with men and racing? I don't get it at all. It's the whole <laughs> petrol head thing, isn't it? Oh, it's mind blowing. <laughs> I used to like watching the motorbikes when Barry Sheen was around. Oh, I loved Barry Sheen. Loved him. Yeah. Well, have I been there for time, Amanda? Of oh, course, I've got no idea. Just a second. Uh, it's ten two. Oh, very good. It's fine. So I've got. <laughs> I've got even more going on down here now, right? Because, <laughs> you know, my tiny little house, and it's like, over there is, is the sort of sitting area. This is the dining area, which I've commandeered for painting. And I now have um, a temporary house guest, which is sleeping on the sofa. Have you? <laughs> Not at the moment. But, um, yeah. We... <laughs> so it's all going on here. Oh. I'll have to catch up on that tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so there's nothing, nothing, nothing exciting. It's one of the lost boys. One of the lost boys has got a bit lost. Well, lucky to have you. They flipping well are. It's like fostering <laughs> without the social services. <laughs> it is. It is. Yes, it's just like that. <laughs> Maybe I'm not getting paid for it. No. Or assessed. Or assessed for it just as well. Yes, the assessments, we loved that intrusion into our life. I bet you did. That must have been the most fun yeah, part. Yeah, they, they interview. You have to do like nine months training to be a foster carer. And they interview. Really? Yeah. 
you have to go away on residential training and you have to it's class your class is a professional and um you have to they interview um your doctor they interview the school teachers of your children they interview really? yeah they go around and see your families and they also ask you for two character references and they go around and scrutinize them as well oh. you have to write all sorts of essays about things you've done wrong in life things you've done better in life uh yeah it's quite uh everything is on show and if you try to blag it if you try to you, you just can't they come around so often and catch you ad hoc <laughs> They're not planned visits, they just come round. If it, and there's no point in trying to hide it because even if you manage by some miracle to get away with anything, the foster kids would grass you up in five seconds flat. So. <laughs> yeah, well, do you know what drives me nuts? And, you know, with respect to, to individuals that can't have children, this is that's not what I'm saying, but, you know, anybody can get pregnant and have children, you know, and then they're not scrutinised. No. You know? But... To that, to that degree, and yet to be a parent of a foster child, well, you've got to jump through hoops. And that's, that's to be a foster carer, and if you want to be an adoptive parent, so if you can't have children, uh, you have to go through all that and some more. Yes. Um, yeah, because a friend of mine, she went through, um, she was fostering, fostering mainly babies, and then, you know, wanted to adopt um, one of the babies herself. And it took two years yeah. Yeah. after, yeah. you know, going through all that, being a registered foster carer, you know, having this baby it's for two years. It's really hard. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's very difficult to... Like, I know what I thought as a foster carer about what was wrong with the system... But how to correct the system, I, you know, I've no idea. No, no, I know what you mean. I'm glad I never, you know, I don't have to be part of that anymore. I was beat by it. Exhausting. You know, it's like the school system, yeah. and we, we've both been in that. You fight it. And it's you like, fight it. it's easy to criticise, but what? how would we do it differently? Yeah. And you, you can fight it and fight it and in the end you really come to the you might win a few small battles but for the effort required <laughs> i'm not altogether sure it's worth it uh, well i admire anyone that does it i really do because yeah. i know i could not for the faint hearted <laughs> well you're not faint hearted are you not? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like oh i've got a good idea <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that hasn't changed. <laughs> no. Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm quite pleased with this. So you should be. It's looking glorious. It'll come out that good, to be fair. But mine looks like I'm not quite sure. But you know, remember last week. My balaclava face turned out into something, you know, okay. <laughs> Hi, Anna. So I haven't given up hope. <laughs> yeah, you need to loosen it up a bit. That's, that would be my constructive. Oh, absolutely. But I want to get the colours in first and then go over yeah. to loosen it, if that makes sense. It's what I've said to everyone that's shown me pictures. They've shown me amazing pictures, pictures that have been worked out and worked, which is what you do when you are really trying hard at something is to go over and over and over and over and there's nothing wrong with that at all um and i mm. think it's being brave enough afterwards to just go in and loosen it up with some loose strokes and some and going oh actually that's better than it it was before and surprise yourself a bit and just be brave because you can put it back in if it all goes wrong well yeah i mean i found with the the other picture that i was doing today um waiting for it to dry and then going back in and going back in and going back in it just added so many more layers and textures to it yeah, no, and yeah. dimensions to it i was, I was quite yeah. happy yeah. you seem to achieve that effect 
without doing all the layers? Well, I think because the, the, to me, the idea of this picture was to show, the use the colour behind as the sort of tech, the layers, if you like, um, in, mm. in an abstract way. And then um, use, just use three colours. It makes it easier for people that are just starting to sort of break a piece up into, you know, when you've got all shades of, skin colour from yellow to orange to pink to brown it you know it all gets a bit where do I put you get a bit where, much. where do I put all that when when you, you're new so three colours just the light colour the shadow and then the colour in between is actually quite simple whether you do grey scale as I've done or whether you just choose a pale yellow a dark yellow and a middle yellow you could do it doesn't have to be black and grey but it this works quite well with the contrast of the colour that we've got, got going on behind that was a bit in your face yeah. it's funny I mean, you know, we, we just work very differently that's good that's good y'all this would look good see i think this this kind of art that we're doing here could look absolutely great on a chest of drawers yeah, I've, I've, I've got a, I have a plan. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> right. And then right at the end, and just so that people don't think that I've completely forgotten about pipettes, pipettes do come into play that's the last bit so that might be reason to come back tomorrow and watch pipettes. well I'll definitely need to come back tomorrow yeah the pipettes will really finish this off and give it the wow so Amanda have you come up with what next week's post is going to be oh I didn't know I had to do it today yeah. oh. oh sorry um. God. We've done blues, we've done greens, we've done quirky, mm -hmm. we've done best, most proud of. Um. Oh God, do I really have to come up with it now? Um, <laughs> we'll do it for tomorrow though. How about something where it's not just paint, it's um, the most designed piece in so much that you know you've used decoupage or you've stamped it or you've transferred so the most sort of um creative piece if you will decorative decorative that's the word i'm looking for the most decorative okay. decorative because you know we all use those don't we we're, we're you know we use a lot of de decorative techniques and there's some gorgeous examples out there so I think maybe the most decorative. Okay, I shall create a post to put up and you guys can start posting. And then you'll be featured on my page as well, the winner of last week's. Done. Who was again? It was um, Joan Gallivan Dandria. And she's from Jane Henner's Reloved Furniture. So I shall be. Brilliant. Congratulations. Yeah, it is a really lovely piece she's posted. She was a clear winner, so. And the thing is, it's all nominated by your creative peers as well, isn't it? It's not yeah, like, I didn't choose you know, the winner. Is coming along. Yeah, I didn't choose the winner. You guys chose the winner. You you went through and liked the posts that you liked. So that's really cool. So 
Yeah, it's, it's clearly what we as artists so if, and creators. Yeah, if you like. want be proud because it was unanimously voted on. Right, I think we're nearly there for tonight, Miranda. Definitely. Right, you guys. Hi, Krista. Still got a long way to go. This is on. Who's on? Krista. My sister. Yeah. Sorry. Just... <laughs> Sorry, Chris. I can't see a thing without my goggles on. You know that. <laughs> right, come on, guys. Let's round it up, Miranda. Sit down. Let's see a face. Thank you. Can you see it? No. No, not your face. Not that face. Your face. Oh, my <laughs> face. No, I've got... I can only sh I can only show you half of my face. <laughs> I have a rash, <laughs> which is clearing up nicely. But that's why I decided on this camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't got any lipstick on either, so that's gone quite well. <laughs> I need another lesson. Anyway, guys, thank you. We will be glamorous yeah, one night. Yeah. Promise you. you. <laughs> thank you for joining we'll us. We'll work on it together. We'll go paint all over me ridiculous thank you guys so much for joining us again tonight and I, I hope you've learned a lot and um you know look at what paul has achieved tonight in just one hour that's i think that's amazing because i couldn't certainly couldn't do that in one hour no way thank you lovely thank you for joining from me too and please um share spread the love tell us what you think tell us if you want some more tell us if you want less tell us if you want Show us your examples. And show us your examples, definitely. And then get posting your most decorative pieces. We will be on tomorrow at seven o'clock, same time. Just to yeah. to round up and perhaps do a little bit more. To make sure that Amanda's got time to do some work. Yeah, okay. We'll see you then, guys. You and Paula can chat. She's nearly finished. And I'll just yeah, get on. Okay, and I'll tell you a story or two. <laughs> yeah, story time. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.